Good morning. Get the wiggles out. Roll your shoulders. Swing your legs. Do a little twist. Roll your neck. Little intuitive movements. Root through your sit bones. Pull up your excess booty if that helps you root and feel a little more grounded. Make sure you're not leaning forward onto the pelvic bone. Bring yourself center between, from front to back, between the pubic bone and tailbone. Center yourself side to side, left to right, steadying bone. Relax your legs. Have a nice relaxed position, relax your toes. If your feet are not flat on the floor, maybe place a blanket or something so that they're nice and supported. So they're not hanging off of the edge of the chair. Close your eyes, lift through your crown and just tune into your breath. Take a couple of moments. Trace your breath through the body, in through the nose, feeling the air on the nostrils, feeling the breath in the sinus cavities, back behind your eyes. Feel the breath go down through your throat, over your voice box. Maybe you let out a little hum or growl or mm, feel the breath through the voice box area down through your trachea. Feel your chest rise as your lungs expand. Feel your diaphragm lower through your organs, providing more space for the lungs. Feel your belly relax as the diaphragm pushes outward on the belly. Feel the belly contract drawing it slightly inwards on each exhale. Feel the diaphragm rise up into the lungs. Feel the chest constrict slightly. Feel the chest fall as the breath leaves the lungs. Feel the leaving breath come through your voice box. Feel the leaving breath come through the throat, the back of the mouth, the palate. Feel it warm, warmer in your sinuses than the exhale. and feel it leave out through the nostrils. Survey your body from the soles of your feet to the palms of your hands to the crown of your head. How does your body feel today? How does your heart feel today? How does your heart feel physically, emotionally? How does your head feel? Today we're gonna do some of our old school movements that we've done for years. Ones that you guys know how to modify if you need to. Go ahead and drop your chin forward, opening up the back of your neck. Not squeezing in tight, just gently dropping forward. 
ever so slowly roll towards the right, opening up through the left. As you get all the way over to the right, lift your chin slightly and then tuck and roll slowly back to center. I want you to do very slowly, only the right side, rolling over, lifting chin and tucking and coming back to center. Doing a few of these nice and slow, focusing on stretching and opening through the left and then allowing it to relax when we come forward again. And do one or two more. Pausing at the forward center. Check your, your spinal alignment. Did you kind of start leaning to one side? Realign if you did. And let's start working on the going to the left and working on the right side of the neck. Rolling over, lifting chin, and then tucking and rolling back to center. Allowing the right side of the neck to get some deep stretch. And then to let it relax when we come forward. Going nice and slow so we don't get any catches. We don't get any muscle spasms. Maybe do one more. As you come to center, check your spinal alignment, your trunk, everything is stacked one vertebrae at a time. Bring your head back up to neutral. Then lift your chin towards the ceiling. I want you to focus on the chin lift, not the back of the head drop. And I want you to imagine as if your, your low belly and your chin are attached and you sit up tall and really reach that chin towards the ceiling. Draw the low belly in like that string is attached and rooted in your low belly pulling up through the chin. Then relax through the glutes, the belly, bring the chin back to neutral. Take the chin back up, we're gonna lift again. Take it up first and then feel the pull and lift. Slowly relax from the bottom up and returning the chin to neutral. Lifting the chin up, pull and lift. Lowering, starting from the bottom up. Lifting up tall, one more time, reach up. And then lower from the bottom up. And relax, turn your head side to side a few times, release any tension. So we are lifting our chin up. I know my hair is getting long because when I would lift up and reach, my butt would lift a little bit and my hair would get stuck between the chair and my glutes. And then when I brought my chin down, I'm pulling on my hair. So it's getting time to trim. <laughs> Move around, roll your shoulders if you'd like. We're gonna do some shoulder stretch, right arm out to the side, palm is facing forward. Keep your shoulder nice and relaxed. Draw it across the body, nice and slow, as far as you can go. Then hook that left arm onto the forearm, draw it in without breaking the elbow. You wanna keep it straight, but don't lock it out. Keep the elbow nice and strong, draw into the body. Focus on dropping that right shoulder further away from the left ear or the right ear. Should be far away from the left one. Breathe. Now let's drop our left ear to left side. Pulling my hair again. Bring the head back up to neutral. Relax the grip on the forearm, open it back up to the outside. 
Lift the shoulder up to the ear as you bring the arm up. You can either leave it in the air or you can bend the elbow and put it on the head if, you, if up is too much. A little tiny tilt left. Root the right sit bone down. So you're creating nice and long space from the hip bone to the rib cage. Shoulder comes up to ear first, stretch through the upper back, and then drop the shoulder down away from the ear. Slowly start to sit back up, bring the hand back down to parallel. We're gonna press it backwards, press through the shoulder back, keep the chest forward, opening it up wide palm, stretch all the way down the front of the bicep, the palm, forearm, and bring it back. Flip your hand over, palm to the back, scarecrow, let it dangle. And we're gonna slide it in the small of your back. Now draw that belly in and sit up tall so you don't arch trying to reach that hand back there. Go as far as you want, let it relax sitting on your hips or sitting against the chair. Turn your head to the left and drop your chin down. Bring your chin back up, turn your head forward, walk your hand out from behind you and shake it out. All that to the left side. Left side, palm out, facing forward. Keep the elbow down at neutral. Start sliding across the front. Elbow is softly bent. Hook with the right forearm, draw in. Press that left shoulder away from the left ear. Drop the right ear over to the right. Get your hair out of the way. Bring the head back up, unhook your right arm, open it back up to the side. Draw the shoulder up to the ear as the arm comes up. A little lean to the right, root through the left sit bone. Shoulders lifting up towards your ear to get a nice link. Link through the shoulder first. Then draw the shoulder down away from the ear and start to sit back up. Bring the arm down. Open the shoulder up behind you. Chest stays forward. You don't want to twist. Wide fingers. Soft bend in the elbow right before the lock. You don't want to lock out, but right before. Slide it back to neutral. Flip the hand over to face the back wall. Bend your elbow to scarecrow. Relax, slide into the small of your back. Lengthen tall, tuck the abs, keep yourself from arching your back. Up nice and tall. Turn your head to the right and drop your chin down. Trying to keep both shoulders at a neutral position. Breathe. Bring your head back up, turn forward, walk it out. Relax and shake it out. All right, we're gonna use some strap. So if you didn't grab one, I didn't tell you to grab one. Strap, belt, dog leash, something just you can hold on to. We're gonna scooch forward just a tad and we're gonna lasso our right foot. You can hold it with both hands if you want to. I'm a one-handed person because I need one hand to walk, talk with. I want you to root through your sit bones and lengthen through your crown. Feel even side to side and front to back. Take a nice deep breath. As you exhale, flex that right foot, bring it up as far as you feel comfortable without locking out your knee. 
You want to have a little micro bend in your knee so you keep your thigh and glute all. Um, and that's not the right word. Contracted, that's the word I'm looking for. Toes are up, toes are relaxed. You can use both arms or just one, lengthening through your crown. Thigh is active all the way from the hip joint. Let's rotate those toes out. The whole leg moves, not just the knee, not the ankle. And then you come back right back up straight and rotate inwards, which is much, much smaller. And you have more tendency to want to crank your ankle over. We don't want to crank our ankle. We're rotating inward. Bring the toes back up to the ceiling. One more time, lengthen tall through your spine. Flex your foot strongly so that the toes kind of point back towards your head. Get a nice stretch at the back of the leg. Keep the thigh activated. Don't relax into your knee. Breathe. Slowly let it slide down out of your hands all the way to the floor. Shake it out and we're going to switch sides. Lasso left foot. Readjusting if need be. I think I readjust out of habit more than need, but sit up nice and tall, deep breath. Exhale, lift your left foot, soft toes. You can wiggle them around, engage through the thighs and the glute, keeping the knee supported. Tall back. And then rotate the whole leg out. Breathe. Bring the foot back up, rotating the whole leg. We're going to take the whole leg inward, much smaller. Don't crank the ankle. Resist cranking the ankle. I want to crank the ankle. Breathe. I wiggle, I, I shake when I do the inside. Bring your foot back up to neutral. Flex, strong flex. Still that bend in the knee, little bend in the knee. Lengthen through the crown, set up nice and tall. Get a good back of the leg stretch. Maybe you get it in the butt, the low back. Maybe you feel it all the way up the back. Let the leg slide out of your hands. Slide the strap, releasing it all the way to the floor. Keep it, keep that foot lassoed because we're gonna bring the other leg up, okay? Now, if this is bothering y'all and y'all hit my hip peeps, you can always put this leg on a footstool or another chair or couch or something out in front so that it's not drawn in so tight into your body and it gives us some relief into that hip joint. But it still allows you to do a little work to it as well without it being such a severe um, stretch. So holding onto the strap up against the shin bone helps to keep the leg up. Make sure that your ankle is hanging over the thigh. You don't have the bone into your thigh muscle. And you want a soft flex of your foot so it's nice and flat as if you're holding it up against the wall. And I want you to find your nice tall posture, rooting through both sit bones, lengthening through the crown of your head, engaging through your abs, keeping your back, low back supported. Breathe and get comfortable in that position first. Hmm. We're going to go forward in a series of five breaths. Each breath, exhale, we're going to come forward about an inch. Feel free to stop at any inch that your body tells you to. Take a nice deep breath. Flat back, come forward about an inch. Big breath, flat back, come forward about an inch. Nice big breath, flat back, forward about an inch. That's three. Nice big breath, 
clap back forward about an inch for four. Last one big breath and forward for the fifth one. Wherever, whatever, wherever you stopped, breathe. Now focus on lengthening through the crown and kind of tuck your belly a little bit more to push the back part of your sit bones more down into the chair and feel the space that it gives you in your hip. It might relieve a little bit of that pressure. If you have, if it does relieve pressure for you, maybe you can come forward another inch. That's totally up to you. Drop your head, keep your spine aligned, and just drop your head forward, letting it hang, shaking it no. Lift your head back up. Slowly come up with a flat back. And once you're all the way tall, bring that leg down. Shake it out, switch sides. Now, of course, if you do have your uh, leg up on a stool or chair or couch or whatever, you don't really need the strap because the couch is supporting it or whatever you're using is, is the support device. All right, make sure your ankle is hanging off of that thigh muscle. It doesn't have to be way off. It could be just right off to the side so it doesn't provide any uncomfortable pressure. As you lean forward, that bony ankle can poke into that muscle. Soft flex of the foot as if it's resting against a wall, root and evenly centered through both sit bones, lengthening through the crown. We're gonna come forward for those five exhale breaths. Stop when your body says. You may be able to go further or less on this side. You'll find out they're not always the same. Deep breath. Exhale forward about an inch. Keep your back nice and flat. Deep breath. Exhale forward about an inch. Another breath. Exhale forward about an inch. That's three, right? Trying to remember, lost count. Deep breath. Forward another inch. I'm gonna say this is four because I don't remember, but if you're, you know when you need to stop. One more. Exhale forward about an inch. Pause and breathe. Lengthen through the crown and then start to press through the back part of your sit bone. So you're kind of drawing that belly in like you're tucking your hips, you're tucking your tail to press into the back part of the sit bone and it gives a little opening space into that hip joint. If that allows you to come a little bit further forward, you can try that. If it feels like it pulls you back more and makes it to where you can't, then go with what your body tells you. Part of yoga is feeling a position in your body and experimenting with slight movements to make it better, more comfortable feeling, more attuned to your own body structure. Dip your chin forward, keeping the back flat. Lifting the chin up and nice and slow, flat back comes all the way back up, releasing that leg down and shaking them out. All right, we're gonna stand up and do some of our uh, uh, 
balance. We're gonna do one legged stuff. We're gonna put our sole of our foot on the chair. So put the chair in front of you. You may wanna have the back of the chair to the side so you can hold on to it. Move your stuff out of the way. So if, if you hadn't figured it out yet, if anybody was to ask me what I'm looking forward to the most at the moment, it is a my bed. Because I am, for those of you that have been in an RV and um, remember those, the cushions that are typically on a bench seat, they're like this big. Yeah, that's my bed right now. Not the best, not the most comfortable, not the most supportive, especially when you have curves. All right, we're gonna start with putting our right foot on the chair and I want it straight out in front. Use that back of the chair if you need to for support. Toes are facing forward. Make sure you're not, your hips not bent or your hips not hitched and sitting into the mama hip. Even your hips out. Put one or both hands on your hips. You can have one on the back of the chair for balance if you need to. And I want you to lengthen through your joints. So you're gonna lengthen through your ankle, your knee, your hip, draw the belly in, lengthen through the individual vertebrae, tall through the crown of your head. Take a deep breath. Exhale, slide your hips back as your flat back comes forward. Laying that right chest right on top of that thigh. May not be the most comfortable, but you don't have to, re you know, just flump onto it. You can still stay active with a long back. Breathe. Knee is right over the ankle. You can drop the head and let it relax. Try to keep a focal point with your eyeballs. Squeeze both glutes, push through the both feet, squeeze your thighs as you come up with a flat back. Nice and tall. We're gonna do it again. Deep breath. Exhale, flat back comes forward. Our right foot is on the chair. This time I want you to take your left hand to the instep of that foot. Take it to the chair. If you can't reach the chair, maybe you can put a block there, a book. You can be up on spider fingers. You can go to your knuckles. There ain't no way I can go to the flat palm of my hand. Having your right hand on the back of the chair or in the hip socket. We're gonna rotate just our chest and face it towards the right, just a little bit. Keep the low belly pointing downward towards the floor. You're holding onto the chair, just kind of lift your shoulder a little bit. Turn your head, find a new focal point to the right side. Rotate everything back to the center, facing forward. Return your hand to your hip if you'd like, squeeze your butt, root through your feet, squeeze the thighs, come up all the way up nice and tall before we switch feet. You can stomp around or walk around a little bit first if you need to. When you're ready, bring the left, left foot up, hand or hands on your hip. You can always use one hand for support. Lengthen through the, through the joints. It's almost as if you're being drawn upward opening up that little bit of space you have in each joint through the crown, draw the belly in, start to slide the butt back as the flat back comes forward. 
Feel the belly on the thigh, feel the low ribs on the thigh. Maybe you wanna stop before anything gets squished. Lengthen through the crown of the head. Find that focal point. Drop your head. Let it hang. Breathe. Bring the head back up, squeeze the glutes, root through the feet, squeeze the thighs. Use those muscles to come up instead of your back muscles. All right, one more time. Lengthen tall on your inhale, exhale, slide hips back, come forward. Now we're taking the right hand to the chair, right under the shoulder. Left hand is either on the back of the chair or your hip, and you're going to rotate your upper back towards that knee. Turn your gaze slightly. Draw the shoulder back just a little bit to help remind you to open. Keep squeezing through the glutes and the thighs. Find your focal point. Center yourself back, rotating back. Squeeze through the glutes, the thighs, the feet, come up. And relax that foot down. Hallelujah. I'm gonna move my chair forward a little bit. We're gonna do our sways from side to side or swings. Feet a little bit wider than hip width. So if you were to do a W with your arms, your ankles are right underneath your elbows. Arms to the sides and just swing, lifting your back heel. I want this to be generated through your hips, not through your shoulders, not through your arms. The arms are along for the ride. Lifting and lowering. Now get your arms involved where they actually have a say in what they wanna do. If they wanna get a little bit bigger and wrap a little bit further around the body. All right, we're gonna to go to the left. Reach, pull the belly in, reach through the fingertips. Breathe. Inhale all the way up tall. And let's flop again And before we do the other side. Now we're gonna go to the right. Pull the belly in and lengthen, bending over as much as you feel comfortable or confident in doing while keeping your balance. You really have hardly any weight on that back toe. Breathe. Inhale up and over back to neutral and again flop hair in my mouth all right we're going to do a forward fold so you have a couple of choices on your forward fold you can get closer to your chair and you can come forward onto your elbows you can come forward onto your forehead or you can get the chair all the way out of your way and you can just do a traditional forward fold. I would suggest having the seat of the chair away from you because we're gonna do a swan dive version. So make sure the feet are hip width apart, toes facing forward, and that hair is, I'm gonna find it. That you're far, far enough away from the chair to either have elbows or forehead. Take a nice deep breath up. Little arch in the upper back, head looks up, and then your chest is going to come forward, arms out like your swan diving all the way down. Pick which one you like the best, elbows, forehead, or just hang over your legs. If you're just hanging over any of them, you can bend your knees more if you want, more or less, whichever you want to do, or you can kind of just keep 
bending and straightening and getting a little back of the leg stretch. If you want more stretch, if you don't want more stretch, deep bend. If you wanna do a massage, you can beat on the back of your thighs with your fists. You can rub on the back of your thighs or calves. Take a moment, listen to what body your body prefers. You can rock. We're gonna do another one. So bend into your knees, take a deep breath, squeeze your butt and come all the way up. A nice upper back arch, head looks up, swan dive, hands come out, chest comes forward first, chin follows, taking it down to your preferred forward fold. Breathe. And again, inhale, squeeze butt, come all the way up. Little back bend, swan dive it forward all the way down to your preferred swan, to your preferred forward fold. And relax. All right, we're gonna come up, squeeze the butt, squeeze the legs, come all the way up. No arch, just breath and relax. Make your way to the floor. Shake it out. Find your way down to the floor. Looks like I need to uh, clean the bottom of my chair legs. It's making my mat dirty. We're gonna go ahead and start lying down. So make your way all the way onto your back. Draw your knees up and roll a little bit. We're gonna do some one leg you, with the strap. I know I didn't tell you that before you got on the floor. I apologize, but yeah, you need, you might want your strap. You don't have to have it. You can always put your hands behind your thighs. But for those of you that enjoy the strap, now is gonna be the time. Last of the right leg. And you have two choices with the left leg. You can stay with the left foot on the floor or you can lengthen it out. It's totally up to you. When it's out long, you're gonna get more stretch in different areas. When it's bent, you obviously will feel some relief in your back. You also have some relief in the inner thigh. Have the right leg up over the top. Playing it balanced for just a moment. Then draw it across midline. Tiny bit. Take it out to the side. As far as you feel comfortable. Try not to just relax into the hip joint. You let it go all the way, way out here. Still squeeze through the butt. Don't just let everything just kind of hang out. And bring it back up to center. Bend your knee, release the strap, but keep it nearby. Drawing it in nice and tight into the chest, deep breath. Exhale, lift your head, nose to knee, push your heel down, left foot down and come back down. Left hand on the outside of that right thigh, squeeze the glutes, keep them stacked as they roll together to the left side. Keep everything stacked up, active, ankle in alignment with the knee, and roll back. Draw the left knee in, drop the right foot, last of the left foot, or grab the back of the thigh, either one. Let it balance for a second first. Draw across the body, 
tiny bit. Then take it out to the outside, keeping the glute engaged, trying not to lay into your joint. Bringing it back up, bend the knee, release the strap. Take in a nice deep breath. Exhale, lift your head, nose to the knee, press the right foot into the floor, lower back down. Right hand on the outside of left thigh, squeeze both glutes, deep breath. Exhale, roll them over to the right. Keeping engaged, keeps them stacked. Keep your foot active so that it keeps the ankle and the knee lined up. And then roll back. You can draw one or both knees in, or you can flop them on the floor. We're gonna prepare ourselves for Shavasana in just one moment. We're gonna do a couple cannonballs first. Take a nice deep breath. Exhale, cannonball, pull yourself in. Another big breath, arms overhead, big breath. Exhale, wrap around, cannonball. One more big breath, arms overhead. Exhale, wrap them around, cannonball, and relax. Releasing your feet to the ground rolling around a little bit or flopping a little bit, preparing yourself for Shavasana, getting all of your creature comforts together. Blankets, pillows, eye masks, clocks, bolsters, whatever it is that you need. Once you get all of your stuff situated, come into your breath. Trace the breath as we did in the beginning through the nose, into the head, throat, trachea, into the lungs. Feel the movement of the diaphragm in the abdomen both on the inhale and on the exhale. Feel the chest fall at the exhale. Trace it back out of the body. Feel the temperature change from the in to the out. Survey from the soles of your feet through the palms of your hand and the crown of your head. How does your body feel now? Better, worse, the same? How's the heart? How's the head? How are the, the thoughts that are racing? Have they calmed and slowed? Relaxing through our forehead, allowing those wrinkles to just melt. Relaxing through our eyes, our jaw, our neck, into our throat, over our shoulder, down the right shoulder into the right arm, right palm, right fingers, down the left shoulder into the left arm, left palm, left fingers. From 
the shoulders into the chest and upper back. into the abdomen and the low back, the right hip, down the right leg, the right foot, right toes, down into the left hip, the left leg, left foot, left toes. Feel the weight of your body as you allow each muscle group to release. As if each exhale allows you to release a little bit more. Go a little bit deeper, make your body feel a little bit heavier. I want you to imagine that you're standing on a path. Pebble rocks beneath your feet, soft and smooth. The path is fairly narrow. There might be just enough room for your fluffy companion to walk with you. There's grass on either side. Close to the path, the grass is small, short. But as the grass gets further from the path, it gets a little bit longer and a little bit longer. Until you come to the edge of fields with full wildflowers. When you walk down the path and you observe the flowers on either side swaying in the breeze. And just to the outside edge of each wild flower, there's a fence line. Not of modern barbed wire, but of old split rail. Some of them have fallen. The wood is weathered. It's a calming feel to it. As you continue down your path, you come to a Y. To the right, you can see out in the distance that the path would take you through hills and valleys, through heavy grass, rugged rock, stream crossing. And if you look to the path to the right, you can see, we were just at the right, let's look to the left. If you look the path down to the left, you can see that this ease path continues. They're easy rocks, often smooth to the feet. Soft sun rising. If you look back to the right, you can see the difficult nature of the path. You can see the adventuresome of it. What's over the next hill? What's in the next valley? Can you make it over that stream through the rock steps? Are they slick? Are they smooth? 
will they support or will they fall away at the weight of your steps? Looking back to the left, the easy path seems peaceful. Not as exciting, but sure. Each step is more confident. Each step would be stable, comfortable. As you ponder each side of the path, what is your first immediate choice? Would you conquer the first path, the path of adventure on your own? Is it more appealing if a friend was there by your side? Companion, fluffy friend, or standing tall human? Or would you choose the other path that's a little bit easier on the body, easier on the walk? Maybe it's more quiet, more isolating, because you don't need help, but maybe you want help with a friend, a time to discuss and not have to think about your steps. And as you ponder each path, if you had one change to make, and that change was that there are no barriers. You have full function of body. You have full function of mind and cognition and balance. Maybe that means you're 20, 30 years younger. If there were no barriers, which path would you choose? In life, we always have a choice. We have a choice of a path that is maybe a little more difficult or a path that is smooth sailing. But always take into account that the path of smooth sailing may not be the best. Just like the path of difficulty may not be the best. Try and take a moment to look down each path, repercussions of the choice, the things that are just a little bit further down than the choice of which side to take right in front of you. But in any path, trying to remain calm and positive and look for the end result for all parties to be positive and kind. And today, do you choose the easy path? Are you ready for adventure today? Try something new and different and exciting. Or is today a lay on the couch day for you? Whatever you choose, choose it with careful thought. Take a nice deep breath and fill up your lungs. And as you exhale, allow the path to fall away. Allow the vision to fall away. Another nice deep breath, allowing yourself to fully re return to your body, return to your mat, return to your heart and your breath. Wiggling your fingers and toes, rolling your wrists and ankles, bending and straightening your knees, roll your shoulders, squeeze your glutes, arch and contract your spine, turn your head side to side. 
get some movement back into the body. When you're ready, bring one, one knee at a time into your chest. Give yourself a couple of little rolls. And then roll over to your side, whichever side is more comfortable. Stack your shoulders, hips, and knees. Long spine supported neck. Give a moment for gravity to transition. I always thank you for choosing the path of joining me today. You could have laid on the couch, could have taken a nap, could have pondered through a magazine, could have been any number of ways of wasting an hour. Thank you for having the hour with me. Bring yourself up to a seated position rooting through both sit bones, roll your shoulders a few times in both directions. Take a nice deep breath, lengthening through your arms to the side all the way up. And exhale, release down. Another breath, inhale all the way up. Hands come together overhead, exhale, bring them down to your chest, allow your eyes to flutter open and namaste.